Hello, Pippa Monique here for AFTV. How's everyone doing, man? I hope you're doing well, keeping safe, keeping healthy, crazy times that we're living in. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content that AFTV is bringing out, the Reloaded series, Robbie's cooking. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments below, boy. Bully beef and all that. But um, now I'm here to um, obviously keep women's football afloat because crazy times in the world but crazy times in football as well I mean there's so many things happening we don't know if the league's gonna finish I mean it was announced that every, everything below women's championship uh, and league two I believe was gonna carry on was, was not gonna carry on but everything above that was going to but things are changing constantly um, and we don't know where women's football stands at the moment because as you know across the country the lower leagues are about to go into administration they're going to need help with funding um so it'll be great to know that we could keep women's football alive because there's been no talk of women's football at all i mean on a year that was seeing the growth of women's football seeing attendances rising at games and seeing players get more prolific getting well known um across all generations and across all demographics it was great to see and now it's come to a standstill i just don't know how the players are coping really i mean I saw uh, Leah Willison's Instagram live with Alex Scott last week and she mentioned something that was so crazy to me. She said that, you know, obviously she wants to keep training. She's still an athlete. Of course, she has to keep training because football will come back soon, hopefully. Um, and she said that she had to train next to her car because she doesn't have a garden um, and she has the weights. She keeps the weights in the back in her boot and she trains next to her car because the weights are too heavy to bring into the house. And I thought that was insane. I mean, obviously, like... We know that the men's pay packages are so different to the women's, but it's completely different worlds, man. I just hope that all the players, especially those in rehab, like Beth Mead, she had to tweet out recently, you know, could someone send me a Watt bike so I can continue with my rehab at home? Thankfully, the Lewin group sent her one. They tweeted her back and sent one out to her. And she's, she's training back now at home. But we're worlds apart. Obviously, the men have crazy indoor gyms they've got nice houses like mansions even and obviously they're they're able to continue their training at home but the women live in a complete different world they were on the up and up and it feels like they've just been smacked in the face really but we can't help that this is a, a global pandemic that we're going through and there's more serious things to worry about but I want to keep some positivity in the women's game I'm going to try to I'm going to be breaking down today my top 10 WSL players of the season so far. Now, I kid you not, this was so hard to whittle down to just 10 and to not be biased because it was, I could have easily just put like six Arsenal players in there, but I haven't. I had to be fair, I had to think this through and it was very, very hard because there's some serious, serious candidates there from all teams. So um, this is my top 10. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Let's go. Right, now in number 10, I've put this young lady because she is a big game player she scored the opening goal against Chelsea uh, at Kings Meadow which was a, such a big game and you need it's ebony salmon you need strikers like this that are not afraid to come out against the big dogs and score opening goals she scored the winning goal against Man United her former team and she just she's been a breath of fresh air for Bristol City especially with their struggling at the relegation zone at the bottom of the table she's been an absolute breath of fresh air and a super striker um, and she gets in my top 10 position she's in number 10 in number nine it's Brighton striker Aileen Whelan, who is their top scorer with five goals this season and, of course, was nominated February's PFA Fans Player of the Month. So, yeah, she's she's a credit to, to, to Brighton um, with, the, with the couple of injuries they've had in their, in their attacking players. She's really stepped up to the plate and um, she's been good, man. Five goals. Something to be proud of, Aileen. In number eight, oh, this was really hard. It's our captain, Kim Little. Now we have to consider that her season came to an even earlier end with with an injury that was kind of mysterious really because we were quite unsure what had happened to Kim. I mean one minute she was on fire then the next minute in a very important game I'm pretty sure it was the uh, Conti Cup semi-final against Man City she was sat on the bench not even on the bench sorry she was sat in the stands um, and it was very confusing for fans we, we didn't know what was going on um, and then it was later revealed that she had an ankle injury or a foot injury and had some type of foot surgery but before that she was doing absolute wonders in the midfield for Arsenal creating goals and uh, going forward and attacking and she has Kim Little five goals and two assists um, and that has really really added to the amount of goals that Arsenal have scored this season and she's just a credit to the team and she's been doing it for years man she's an absolute icon um, and I know she's probably going to hate me for putting her eighth I hope you don't hate me Kim 
But eighth is still good. You're still top 10. You're still top 10. Considering you haven't played a full season, that is a really good position to be in. So number eight is Kim Little. Now in number seven is Lauren Hemp. She's played for a few cities, Norwich City, Bristol City, and now Manchester City. Now, she's been one of those players that's finally come into her own. She's been obviously a young player. Uh, she won the PFA Young Player of the Year Award a couple of years ago. And she's always been considered a young player. You know, you see her on the bench a few seasons ago. And now she's become into her own. And she has been absolute fire for Manchester City. Absolute fire for such a young player. I can't even call her a young player no more. She is a fully, full-fledged first-team player. And she's doing absolute bits for Man City. She's fast on the wing. She goes central. She scores goals. She's got four, five goals and four assists this season for Man City, which is probably helping them where they're sitting at the top, top of the table this season. And she's been absolute dynamite. And her career is just going to go from strength to strength. And I cannot wait to see what she does in the future. She is literally a talent to watch out for. And in number six, it's another Lauren, but it's Lauren James, ex-Arsenal. Had to throw that in there. She has had a wonderful career and it's only just starting. Obviously, she was in the Conti Cup final of Arsenal a few years back. And then she went on to be her own. She went on to Man United, one, was one of the first players to sign for Man United when they were first formed in 2017. She was the first goal scorer in the WSL for Man United, which is a big, big achievement. And since then, she's just been scoring mad goals. Lauren James has been absolute fire for Man United. Um, she ha obviously helped them get promoted into the WSL last season. And it feels it feels like they've been in WSL for ages. It's, it feels like such a long season. I feel like it's a never-ending season. Um, but what she's done for them this season has been amazing. Lauren James with six goals for Man United. Um, and she's got so many amazing team, team players around her as well. Uh, such a good team, man. Man United, they're going to go from... Uh, for what they've done coming into this league already... And I believe they're in fourth. I could be wrong. I haven't checked that table in ages. But last time I checked, I'm sure they was in fourth. And that is such an achievement for their first season in the WSL. Um, and they're just going to be one of those teams that are going to be like battling it out at the top. Because this season it was Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City. Next season and f following season, I believe it's going to be Man United that's going to be up in those ranks, definitely. And Lauren James is going to be one of those key players for that team but for now she sits number six in my top 10 WSL players of the season so far now let's get into the top five now number five another ex-Arsenal gotta throw that in there is Chloe Kelly now if this girl doesn't appear in anyone's top 10 list then you have to revisit it because she I can't even find the word to describe this girl she's just she's she's just a star she's just a star Chloe Kelly has banged so many goals for Everton um, that, that that goal, uh, the two goals at the beginning of the season, I think it was against Bristol City, where she scored two within like three minutes. That game alone at the beginning of the season just, just made her mark. Like she is not playing games this season. And she's gone on to score. Where's Chloe Kelly? Nine goals this season for Everton. Nine goals. Now, if that's not what you want from your player, I don't know what else you can want, man. And Everton, I mean, they, they, they've done pretty well this season. And Chloe Kelly, I can't give her enough credit for the type of player she is. She needs to be in your top 10. I better be seeing her in yours. Now, in number four, it is Pauline Bremer. Uh, she's had a re... I'm so happy for her because obviously when she first joined Manchester City, quite soon after that, she had a really horrific injury and she was out for ages. I'm pretty sure it was like a year or so. Um, and now she's come back and... She, she she scored a mad amount of goals for Manchester City. Pauline Bremer on 10 goals. 10 goals. And she's she's someone that's not even a, a regular starter. But she, coming towards the end of the season, she, she has been. But originally, she hasn't been a regular starter. And she's set to leave at the end of the season. It was announced in January that um, she was set to leave and go back to... Or go to Wolfsburg. So, whatever game was last... The last game that I physically watched her in was the uh, Man City v Arsenal game. That's the last game I saw her live. That's the last time I'm going to see her in the WSL. But it's been a pleasure. And it's been a great, great season for Manchester City. I mean, the season's not over yet. But if it continues, they could potentially win the league. Because they're, they're sitting comfortably at the top there. Um, and that'll be a nice way for her to end her season. Um, it's been really good having Pauline Bremer in the WSL. And I can't wait to see what she does at Wolfsburg. Because, she, Wolfsburg, because she's incredible. Now, in number three, this player... It's just so underrated. I don't hear this girl's name enough. It is Guru Rayton, the midfield magician, the maestro in midfield, the type of midfield player you would want in your team because she just pulls 
all the strings. She orchestrates everything. And I cannot believe I don't hear her name enough. Now, if we look at her stats, Guru Rayton, she has got, where is she at? Five goals and eight assists. Bearing in mind, she only joined January 2019, I believe. She's fairly new. And ugh, her movement on and off the ball, it speaks for itself, eight assists there. You just know what she's doing on and off the ball, creating so many chances for the likes of Bethany England and everyone else to get on the end of. She's been absolutely key for Chelsea this season. I mean, when you think of Chelsea, I'm sure the first names that will come to mind will be Bethany England, uh, Millie Bright at the back. But you have to mention Guru Rayton because what's happening there in that midfield is, is what's keeping Chelsea so solid and plus the amount of depth they have in their squad and all those other great qualities as well. Um, but in third position, it is Guru Rayton. Where does she place in your top 10? Now, number two, this is where it gets really tight now. And I had to, I had to base it on stats and, and other factors because it was so hard to decide who goes in second and who goes in first because they both had incredible seasons so far, like absolutely incredible seasons. Arsenal fans, you're probably going to hate me for this. Originally, she was at number one, but then I had to think it through. I've changed my mind again. Oh, it's so tough. I've changed my mind again. Right, in number two, bring on the backlash. It is Bethany England. She, top, top, absolute baller. And I'm so glad that we finally get to see what she's worth because... She went on loan to Liverpool a couple of years ago. She came back to Chelsea. We still didn't see enough of her national duties. We didn't even see her in the World Cup. And the the big, big game at uh, Wembley with the sold out, sold out crowd, we didn't even get to see her play. And I did some coverage for that game. I was interviewing fans beforehand, um, some England fans. And I was like, oh, who, would, who do you think is going to be on the score sheet? And literally everyone said Bethany England. Nobody but Chelsea fans knows this girl better than anyone else. So before before this season, Chelsea fans knew what Bethany England was capable of because they would always scream, she's going to be on the score sheet, she's going to bang a hat trick, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. And I used to think, I haven't seen enough of her for you. Like, where, where are you getting this information from? Like, how did you, how did, how did we end up here? But they know because they've seen her in years before this season and they know what she's capable of. And I'm glad now that everyone else is getting to see what she does on a consistent basis. And I need to see her in that line of the squad more regularly because it doesn't make sense. England for England. Come on, it's written in the stars. Uh, she scored 14 goals this season. Joint top scorer with Vivian Miedema so far. And she has four assists. And this has been such an incredible season for her and of course she won the Conti Cup final with Chelsea that heartbreaking game for me uh, where she scored the last minute winner in stoppage time Abs oh it's so hard to decide oh I know a lot of people are going to put in number one am I being biased the only reason and this is the only factor I haven't put her in number one yet is because it is the first season that she's done this and it's not a full season yet the end of the season is not here yet um whereas in number one position, which is Vivian Miedema, I know you know I was going to say it, who's also on 14 goals, but has eight assists. Is it eight assists? Vivian Miedema. Yeah, eight. Double the assists. Uh, I think that comes from that game against Bristol City where she had six assists and four goals. Crazy. But um, Vivian Miedema, I have to give it to her because she does this on a consistent basis. This is not her first season doing this. She's been a top scorer. She's top scorer for Netherlands. She does this on a regular basis. And the difference between Arsenal and Chelsea this season is our, Chelsea have a full squad of players that are just available on rotation. And it, this is what I've had to bring it down to. Arsenal, the squad is very thin at the moment. There's so many injuries and it's staggered. The injuries came in quite quickly uh I guess after December, January times, players just kept dropping off, dropping off like Katrine, Bethany England, Kim Little, Leah Walty. It was just all all of the key players that have that have made this um, season so instrumental have dropped off. And then Vivian Miedema, as well as other players that are left in the team, had to dig deep and carry on to, to, to maintain that space in the top three. And they managed to do that, especially in that game against Liverpool, where they had to dig deep to get a win in that 3-2 win. Uh, away to Liverpool and that is what it's boiled down to when it's between the top one and the top two because although Bethany England is a top striker she's doing amazing it's not a full season yet it's not whereas we know what Vivian Miedema can do in a full season um, and Vivian Miedema is, is playing in a team that's not fully fit and st she's still managing to score goals I know someone's going to say I'm biased in the comments but let me know 
what your top 10 WSL players of the season are so far in the comments down below. I'd love to know. Tag me on Twitter. Let me know. Comment down below. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will think of more videos to do to keep you engaged. And um, hope you're staying safe. Follow the NHS guidelines, the government's guidelines. And yeah, man, I hope everyone's doing well in these crazy times. And I will see you soon. The coronavirus has not just affected the world of football, but has affected everybody. But you know what? We can defeat it. There are some steps we can take. Number one, always make sure you wash your hands thoroughly. Number two, if you cough or sneeze, make sure you catch it in a tissue and dispose of it afterwards. And number three, if you're displaying any of the symptoms, always make sure that you self-isolate. I know it's a terrible time, but we will defeat the coronavirus. We will be back.